what to hear of schooling. This is where things can go sideways with your child, right? Making friends and groups for school and being comfortable. And this is where they can make decisions, good decisions or poor decisions. And it's gonna be up to the parents to have that chat, that awkward moment, awkward chats with their children, right? So on that note, if you don't mind, sorry, I got or um, I should say the community have for the parents something to counsel the parents because the parents are the ones a lot of these kids come from really really good families like honestly they're awesome families like I, I, I dealt with them whatever and then they had no idea what their kid was involved in I know that all this here would have been beneficial for them but what what do we have to counsel the parents themselves because this is like this is really really uh, uh, an important um, uh, issue community comes out kids engagements, right? The only way you can educate the, the community is having our friends here from this to educate the community. That's step one, right? But if they become victims to an incident, we have a victim assistance unit that we work closely with. They have the, the right people, the psychologists, and uh, we work closely with them as well. If the parents do become a victim to an incident, absolutely. But at the end of the day, uh, our first step is to initiate the, uh, the education. But it's hard. I mean, I've seen it. For, it's hard for the family to come in and say, look, my, you know, like, involved in, in the um, there has to be something for them uh, comfortable for them to come forward and it's something that they uh, it's some kind of counseling because I, honestly I said if they feel so embarrassed that their kid is part of something, part of something. Yeah. And, and Monica, she works very closely with me as my chair of the advisory board. Um, in her background with her education, she's been reaching out to a lot of parents to have that conversation. See those families, because sometimes they don't want to speak to the uniform. They don't want to speak to the police, right? So that's, that's a barrier that I deal with. That is when I ask my advisory board members to now step up, have a chat with them, all the resources, and they'll go share that with the families. So what right? does it take to be, to be involved with this advisory? Uh, what it takes to be involved with the rice board, reach out to me if you're interested. Um, uh, people to talk about it. Uh, our community, unfortunately, is very judgmental. And when I talk to the parents, they talk to me, they tell me how they're suffering. Even after their kids pass away, they don't really say the real reason why they passed away. They, they were killed for whatever reason, uh, or they have a drug overdose or whatever the situation. On the device that someone is involved in getting killed, or being part of a gang shooting, uh, we do our part. We, we'll, we'll go out to the I talked to the youth in jail, and I, t I asked them, what's the problem? They were like, I've been kicked out of my house. I've been kicked out of my own family. I don't have family. And the best way to create family is being part of a gang. So the solution is, listen, and allow the community to work around that. The question is the rise of technology. The rise of technology. A lot of recruitment is happening through the dark web to enter the gangs. What is the police doing to do that prevention through technology? Yeah, so CPS does. But since I'm here, I just want to speak about one thing. I'm just going to be very blunt. In our community, these gang members that we speak about and the gang leaders sometimes got praised and got put in a situation where we don't want to approach them or we value them in a way, which is good. If they're doing good for the community in any way, it's good for them. The problem is that our children spend like how much time with us? Like, you know, like 10, 5% of like their life when they get to school and start getting engaged with circles that we don't know other than the social media. They want to belong, they want to be like popular, they want to be like, they, 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 they want to make money. And with all the respect, the good parents that are like uh, raising, are we going to live here? Are we going to go back there? Are we going to have a house here? Are we going to have a house there? So in that whole mess, the children get lost. And when they get lost, it's very hard to collect them again. So it's very, 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 very important. And I emphasize on the fact, very important is to keep the relationship with our children in the sense of knowing how much time we're spending with them, you know, in a young age, how much time we're bringing together, and, you know, how many of you got the answer, the, the answer to watch or whatever? I, I assume like no one, I don't know, maybe, I, in my head. So, how can a mom or a dad, an Arab mom person, know that their wife, that their, their children is wearing a watch that is like a weed grinder, right? And tell the parents, including myself, come and attend these sessions. 
when we go to our Friday prayers or to Sunday church, our khutbahs and our like things that should be addressed is about these things because these are the struggles that we're facing and these are the things that we need to face. So when I do that, I always um, put them in every sport. I got myself a black belt because of them. I coach every sport that you can coach, but I never left them for when like once once they get off school, they had I put them in. I kept them busy. Red flags that I've seen throughout my career that that's when that communication needs to start happening. Don't don't let that time go by, right? Your your kid or daughter is being bought off at that point with merchandise to work for those schools. Some schools in the South best because they is young. I can't. I do it. Economically, but sorry, well, I do it. My husband. Very soft. Very soft. Yes, very soft. Very soft. Very soft. So, so, so I just want to have this conversation probably, I know we have it our own in most of this group, but again, is it possible for some people in the community who are trusted by the community to work government, by from government, when you say it should be its parents, uh, they sit there or they talk with the with kids, okay, with, with kids. Yeah. Okay, when they kids, they are smart and they know what they want. I have two teenagers, two years, every day. They looking for job. They didn't see any job, mm -hmm. any restaurant, any any place. Why? Now this uh, youth, how you want to think about uh, go to the university? He want to pay, my son, he want to pay. He don't want from dad or mom. Or he want to have job because he's 16, mm -hmm. two years, he didn't find any job. Mm -hmm. And government just support another country. Why they didn't support this country? Yes. Right? Person from youth, it's they, they, they drug or something, after four or five years, it's 100% all. But he don't have another choice, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. And how parents, they, they can't to stay with kids if they don't have time. My country, it's it's bad, not just like Canada. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, my kids, they speak English because we came to Canada are, for are, eight years. Right, I understand and that. Are they connected to any community programs? So, yeah. she, she wants uh, to say oh, something else, actually. Yeah. I, I do want to make one more point before, before I, I uh, give the mic. It is very, very important to remember if one of your children, or you know of a person in a family who has a gang member living in that home, younger children or other children in of being removed. So I just wanted to keep that clear just in case uh, you just think that, oh, okay, he's, this person is only you know, uh, taking care of or uh, involved in the gang life and, and they're the only ones that are risk no all like my 14 years old right is involved in gangs right? right and i don't know right right but it surfaced up and things like are going sideways so all my children are subject to be removed from my house well so what's going on in the home so if if there's drugs in the home and you found that there's drugs in the home kids will be removed yes um if the gang member has been removed and that person is gone yeah uh then it's up to the an investigator to assess whether there are other factors that are um uh, putting other people at risk or this might <laughs> me my brother Heidi, i changed his diaper and then 20 years later i'm taking him to detox where he's stuck in a cycle of gang addiction detox jail. My mother, she denied it, denied it, didn't want to see the signs. I'm asking you to have conversations with your friends because everybody, everybody should know what these little things of drugs are, what gangs are. Because when I went to see my brother last, I had to find him on the streets and he's shooting up. Every family, everyone, Thinks in their mind, not in my backyard, not me, not not this family. Until you find the day I came home and my brother's friend Dobie in my hands and the paramedics at my house, and I'm naloxoning him, and he died. When I was walking in, they told me, uh, "Thank you for being here on Sunday, um, the counselor." Is we need yes, the CBC do university perspective on how to approach each case okay and therefore we need to inform 
more and how beneficial it is to save each life. Um, from uh, speaking from a parent and raised three boys and now I mentioned, I know we've talked about uh, gangs, but uh, we also have the gangs victims. Uh, uh, our sister here just, uh, she spoke uh, about her brother losing his life. In our community, we lose um, not just um, youth, but also adults. Um, I'm not sure who can answer this question, but um, we have families that are highly educated in the community, um, happy, that kids become victims, that become um, addicts, and uh, the mom or the dad constantly having to revive their son. Um, and that's because if they turn to the police, unfortunately there's not much the police can do because they're an adult. Um, they cannot admit them unless the individual himself admits himself. So um, as an Arab mom, I have a lot of My My kids are uh, so that they can get help you know, away from Canada just by changing the scenery for him and uh, you know, looking into his future. But unfortunately, he ended up falling in the cracks as well uh, in that country. And the question is, the youth that are from the age of 13 to 18, when they commit a crime or commit murder, they're in the jail and they end up getting out by the time they're 18. When they're out, they commit another crime. My question to you, Yusuf, why is the justice system and the correctional system is broken in terms of like not keep, keeping that youth in jail instead of... This work that we do, we, we have no say the justice system. That is a higher level for policing, right? I